Good evening, Richmond County, and welcome to your Friday edition of Live at Five. I'm Charlie Melvin. Richmond County now has over 50 cases of COVID-19. The Richmond County Health Department's daily report shows 51 total cases as four new cases were reported. 30 residents are under home isolation and five are hospitalized. 14 people have recovered and there are two deaths reported. 35% of co confirmed cases come from the 51-64 age range with 23% in the 65 or older category. North Carolina is now at nearly 11,000 confirmed cases according to the Department of Health and Human Services. The state is up to 399 deaths. Preparations are underway to make sure the former Sand Hills Regional Medical Center can handle an overflow of patients not infected with the coronavirus should the need arise. Emily Sloan, who works with public relations with First Health, which owns the building, says the state has moved in and held a private open house on Monday for county leadership, law enforcement, first responders, First Health EMS, and hospital administrations to introduce leaders to the facility. The hospital will be able to house up to 60 patients if needed. The hospital was utilized to create a COVID-19 mobile testing facility in late March. However, testing was moved to the outpatient parking lot of First Health Moore Regional Hospital, Richmond and Rockingham within two weeks of the state's announcement. COVID-19 trends are headed in the right direction, Governor Roy Cooper said on Thursday, but North Carolinians are ongoing to be at home at least a week longer, and most shuttered business won't be up and running again anytime soon. For some, that's too long to wait. On Wednesday, the Gaston County Board of Commissioners said it would support people who return to work even though doing so would violate Cooper's stay-at-home order. Later in the day, the county clarified its stance, saying it would continue to follow all state laws, including the governor's executive order, and that it wouldn't ask county staff or county residents to break the law. Gaston County isn't the only community looking for some relief from the economic shutdown and its move to reopen added new fire to local and private acts of civil disobedience around already happening across the state. Over the past two weeks, 5,300 North Carolinians signed a petition asking the governor for a soft opening of hair salons allowing only one customer at a time. Four reopen NC protesters were arrested in Raleigh on charges of violating the governor's order and directed orders from police. Reopen NC protesters in Wilmington took to the streets April 18th, warning about economic destruction if the stay-at-home order continues. NASCAR announced it will return to racing on May 17th, which will kick off a slate of races that include seven events in three series of two, at two racetracks, Darlington Raceway and Charlotte Motor Speedway. The NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, and Truck Series will host its first on-track event since mid-March. The Cup Series will return to Darlington on May 17th with a 400-mile event scheduled for 3.30 p.m. live on TV and radio. What follows is a unique schedule that includes midweek races in prime time and NASCAR Crown Jewel, the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. Each of NASCAR's return events will be run without fans in attendance. Further schedule adjustments will be announced in the future. NASCAR has implemented a comprehensive health and safety plan. In accordance with the CDC, OSHA, and state and local government recommendations, nearly every aspect of how the event is conducted will be significantly modified. In a race competition, procedures remain largely unchanged, though NASCAR will eliminate practice for all events during its opening return slate, as well as, all, as, well as qualifying for all events except the Coca-Cola 600. The green and gold ambience of LED lighting system surrounding the Raider Stadium will be lit up in full force again on Friday. Two weeks after Richmond Senior High School head, Principal Jim Butler held a 15-minute light display to let his students know the school was thinking about them during this current coronavirus, the show will be on a bit longer this time around. Butler posted on several social media sites on Thursday confirming the second light show, which will begin around 8 p.m. and run approximately an hour. The new twist on traditional Friday night lights associated with football games during the fall will serve as a tribute to the entire student body, but primarily for the seniors. During an unprecedented global pandemic, the graduating class has seen the last quarter of senior year wiped out. Aside from in-person schooling and athletics being cut out, the class of 2020 is missing out on several spring events, while the annual Powder Puff football game, senior prom, has been postponed indefinitely and graduation plans are up in the air. The inaugural light show drew dozens of cars that lined the front entrance of the U.S. Highway 1 near the front of Richmond's campus. Butler is hoping for a larger turnout this time and will be allowing cars to enter campus and practice social distancing. Vehicles will be led in the front gate and be allowed to in the areas and parking lots surrounding each end zone. Administration is asking that everyone present doesn't leave their car. When we return, we've got your Live at Five weather report. It's coming up after the break, so stay tuned. Do you want a healthcare career? Certified medical assistants are multi-skilled healthcare professionals capable of completing administrative and clerical tasks, making them a valuable member of the healthcare team at medical clinics, doctor's offices, and other healthcare facilities. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the employment of medical assistants is projected to grow 23% over the next eight years, 
much faster than the national average. At Richmond Community College, our medical assisting students are trained in our cutting edge simulation learning center, giving them hands-on experience with high fidelity mannequins that simulate real life patient interaction. In addition to clinical skills, our students also receive instruction in scheduling appointments, coding, processing insurance accounts, billing, collections, and medical transcription. Complete the medical assisting program in just two years and start your lifelong career today. Visit www.richmondcc.edu to learn more about enrolling in the medical assisting program at Richmond Community College or call 910-410-1700. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. At Richmond County Hospice, we strive to provide high quality care to our patients and their families. Whether it's the incredible hospitality at the Haven House or from the comfort of your own home, you can count on hospice to be there for you. We also offer monthly grief support groups and our chaplain will be there to hold your hand in prayer. Through our amazing staff and our volunteers, hospice has made difficult times easier for our community. Call the number on your screen if you feel that you or your loved one may benefit from our services. Richmond County Hospice, peace, comfort, dignity. JC's in Rockingham has you covered for used appliances, parts, trailers, and storage. We have one of the largest selections of reconditioned washers, dryers, and refrigerators in the Sand Hills, and we offer free delivery to residents inside Richmond County. Come check out our variety of trailers for any hauling job and our storage buildings for the things you need out of the weather or house. We also carry parts and accessories for appliances, trailers, truck beds, and can order the things you need. That's JC's on South Hancock Street in Rockingham. Hometown heroes? Well, maybe. When it comes to backyard comfort and no pesky mosquitoes, call Brown Termite and Pest Control at 910-895-6410 or 910-276-8870. Their team of superheroes can take back control of your paradise. That's 910-895-6410 today. Your Alive at Five weather report is brought to you by R.O. Yellow, Richmond County's new online business directory. Happy Friday, everybody. We're finally at the end of the work week. Hope you're having a great day today. Uh, we're just on the cusp of having a what should be a wonderful weekend ahead. But before we get to that, let's talk about this evening, which is looking a little bit cooler than what we saw uh, say yesterday evening. 7 o'clock, 68, 68 degrees. 9 o'clock, 59 degrees, and then sunset is going to be at 8.04 tonight, and we have a first quarter moon, so we're halfway back into a, uh, into a full moon. It's coming up pretty soon, uh, a couple weeks turn from now. But looking at the highs and lows for tomorrow across the Sand Hills weather map, Fayetteville high at 76, the low at 58, Rayford high at 76, the low at 57, and those temperatures pretty much are all going to be about the same right in that category. Uh, but we are expecting party cloud skies across the entire Sand Hills tomorrow. Lumberton will be a high of 76, low of 57. Warmburg high of 78 and a low of 57. Up in Southern Pines will be a high of 77 and a low of 57 there. Uh, LRB, Rockham and Hamlet will be seeing a high of 77, a high of 78, uh, but the low is definitely going to be a 56. Down in Bennettsville, South Carolina will be a high of 79 and a low of 57 there. Getting really close into the 80s on, uh, down in Bennettsville tomorrow. Waysboro will be seeing a high of 78 and a low of 57. Now looking at the seven day forecast, as we're talking about that nice weekend ahead, it is indeed party cloudy skies on Saturday, high of 78, low of 56. On Sunday, it will be sunny with a high of 86 and a low of 63. And that's pretty much the warmest day out of the seven day forecast ahead. Monday will be party cloudy skies with a high of 86 and a low of 63. And we're getting back into the 70s on Tuesday with a slight chance of precipitation, only a 30% chance in the afternoon and 4% in the evening. High of 77, low of 59 there. Then on Wednesday, more precipitation on the way, only a 40% chance in the afternoon, 30% chance in the evening, high of 75 and a low of 53. And then we'll get back into party cloud skies once again here on Thursday, 
high of 67, low of 47, and then on Friday, party class rise once again, high of 73, and the low of 53. And that's going to do it for your Lot 5 weather report and for tonight's edition of Lot 5. Of course, for the latest news, sports, and events happening here in Richmond County, you can always visit richmondobserver.com or you can download a free RO app for your mobile devices. For the Lot 5 crew, I'm Russell Parker. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on Monday.